Since I started covering wrestling video games on this channel, a game that's been getting requested quite a lot is WCW Backstage Assault. I've got a confession to make, I didn't play this one when it was first released. No, actually, I tell a lie, I put the disc in my PS1, I played it for around 2 minutes, and then I turned it off and played something else. Knowing that there wasn't a wrestling ring in the whole game completely killed this one for me, and I remember thinking that I might as well just play Mayhem instead. I can't remember anything redeeming at all about Backstage Assault, and so it was a game I never got into. I practically didn't play it. With Backstage Assault getting requested on the channel, I knew I had to give it a proper shot. I wasn't going to talk about this without spending a lot of time with the game, and I'm not going to judge the game by what everyone else says on the internet. So I acquired the game by fully legit means, and I put it on this little handheld here known as the RG351P. Quick side note guys, pick one of these up if you enjoy retro games, they're pretty damn good and they even play the N64 wrestling games after playing around with the settings. But yeah, I played Backstage Assault during any downtime I had while moving house. Usually it was a match here and there at night time, any time I wasn't driving in the car and was sitting in the passenger seat. I even got in a few games in the middle of editing wrestling bios videos. I fucking played this thing during most of my free time, just so I could give it a fair look for this video. And, well, everything you've heard about Backstage Assault is pretty much accurate. But I'm going to answer a question today, is WCW Backstage Assault really the worst wrestling game that was ever released? The PS1 version of Backstage Assault, the version we'll be looking at mostly today, was released on October 21st 2000 in North America and November 24th 2000 in Europe. The N64 version was released in December 2000 in North America only, and if you know a bit about wrestling then you'd know that Backstage Assault was released during the dying days of WCW. Viewership had taken a nosedive, fans preferred the WWF and the company's attitude initiative, and the WWF ended up purchasing WCW mere months after Backstage Assault got released. That's not to say there wasn't value in the WCW name when the game hit the shelves, but Backstage Assault came out while WCW Nitro recorded its worst viewership numbers since the Monday Night War began, while the WWF were completely unstoppable. For die-hard fans of WCW, Backstage Assault was released during the darkest days of the company. Kodiak Interactive developed Backstage Assault while EA published the game, the same two teams behind WCW Mayhem. I talked previously about how I actually didn't think Mayhem was a bad game at all, and while it doesn't really hold up today, back then it was a nice change from other WCW offerings on PlayStation 1. You expect a sequel by the same development team to improve on absolutely everything when compared to the original first game. Teams would have a better grasp on the console hardware, the game engine, new tweaks to gameplay should enhance the experience, it should look better, it should sound better, it should make players completely ditch the first game and move on to the second. Somehow WCW Backstage Assault manages to completely buck tradition by going backwards in almost every possible aspect, which is an accomplishment by itself. It's both sad and funny how Kodiak Interactive managed to make Backstage Assault worse than its predecessor, and my only guess here is that they were on a massive time crunch, or they were getting shafted somehow by the publisher and they just didn't want to put in the effort. These kind of licenses usually include some sort of contractual obligation to release a certain amount of games within a certain time period, maybe there was too much pressure, maybe there wasn't enough time. I'm completely guessing here by the way, but it's remarkable how worse Backstage Assault is when compared to Mayhem. Things start off well when you pop in the disc and you get this pretty long FMV sequence. The only problem here is that it kinda highlights how bad things were in WCW at the time, but still, they try to use footage that only features backstage fights or fights at the entranceway. Let's start with the roster, but I need to let you know before we get stuck in, this is getting played upscaled on a PS1 emulator. God knows Backstage Assault needs help in looking as good as possible, but we'll talk about the graphics in a moment. You'll see the upscaling a bit more during actual gameplay. I'll go through the roster here and you can have a look at what's available. It isn't a great roster at all, but you do have some big names in there along with a lot of mid-carders. 
A serious amount of wrestlers need unlocked via the game's two main single player modes, and you've got some stipulations and objectives to complete if you want to unlock everyone. Some of the objectives are tedious as fuck, and because Backstage Assault doesn't offer anything but backstage matches, you're gonna get fed up really quickly. I've downloaded a save file here that has most characters unlocked by the way, and look at how they hid away the player models, and how they instead used photos of the superstars. Photos that take ages to load. What you can do though is press a button to preview the character's moves, then you can have a good laugh at the character models, but we'll do that in a moment. Let's go with Bret Hart vs Kevin Nash, and the first thing you'll see before starting a match are these entrance videos, it's a nice touch for sure. Then you get into the match and… What. The. Fuck. Brett really did have a bad time in WCW didn't he? Look what they did to him. How and why does this game look so bad? EA, Kodiak Interactive and someone from WCW sat down, played this game and said, yeah this is fine, let the sales begin. The word abomination gets used quite a lot with retro game reviewers but this right here truly is an abomination, and we can't blame it on the developers not knowing what they were doing because they did put WCW Mayhem together. Sure, Mayhem wasn't exactly the most pleasing game to look at, but it's fucking leagues better than Backstage Assault, both graphically and gameplay wise. As mentioned earlier, the only plausible excuse here is that the developers had to rush the game out due to contractual obligations, or they got fed up with EA. Whatever the case may be, gamers were expected to pay for this shit, and just like WCW in 2000, fans went elsewhere for their wrestling fix. This came out in North America the same week the PlayStation 2 was released. Imagine not being able to get a PS2, and instead getting stuck with WCW Backstage Assault for Christmas. Being so late in the PS1 lifecycle, you expect games to be, well, better than this, but that just wasn't the case with Backstage Assault. When I played this again on the handheld after a few matches, I knew exactly why I stopped playing back in 2000. Not only does it look laughably bad for PS1 standards, but it plays bad too. Let's go back into the character select screen and take a look at some of those character models and the move animations. Some of these are going to make you feel pain or laugh uncontrollably. Here's Sid Vicious doing his taunt, but it looks more like a little jig. Goldberg's flying shoulder block looks more like Goldberg tripping up and falling flat on his face. Here's Scott. Oh Jesus. Here's Scott Hall demonstrating how to punch those pesky punk kids right in the balls, and here's Booker T or Apollo Creed showing us how to throw a main right hand. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> this looks more like the Huckster from the Billionaire Ted skits on WWF Raw. What happened here? Uh, we gotta check out his other attires. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, that doesn't look so bad. The bandana and glasses sure do help. And uh, <laughs> Hulk Hogan in piss yellow gear. What the- And look, look at Hulk Hogan in game. Look at his hair brother, look at the moustache. <laughs> the move previews would have been a nice touch if the moves looked decent, but the real comedy comes in the form of character models. Not only do the faces look bad, funny or even scary, but the attires and the designs look like they were exported from Microsoft Paint after being worked on for about 5 minutes. You don't expect miracles on the PS1, but Mayhem looked way better, Nitro and Thunder looked better, even WCW vs The World looked better, and that game featured wrestlers who hadn't seen a gym in years. Some might say too that upscaling these games presents them in a way that they shouldn't have been seen, and these games were supposed to be played on CRT TVs with low resolution, and I say fuck that. Upscaling in this way lets us see exactly what the developers thought was possible, and some PS1 games, when upscaled, look absolutely fantastic such as Ridge Racer and Bloody Roar 2. WCW Backstage Assault just looks bad either way, and here, if you don't believe me, let me show you. See what I mean? It looks bad either way, the upscale lets us actually see the faces a whole lot better, but that doesn't mean it helps matters at all. There's no hiding those fucking massive shoulders on Double J, his crooked glasses, his square head. No matter what way you decide to play WCW Backstage Assault, it's gonna look bad. Here's Kimberly Page looking like the hot little minx she truly is. Ric Flair folks, there's the nature boy with the green tint in his hair. 
Eric Bischoff looks like he should be in some European boy band that specializes in house music. Check out Disco Inferno, just flat out not looking like Disco Inferno. And let's see if you can guess who these next guys are just by looking at their face textures. Backstage Assault, as mentioned earlier, takes away a fundamental element of wrestling games, the wrestling ring. Large backstage areas, or box rooms, host every single match that you'll have in the game. Normally I'd say at least they tried something different and hey, other sports games such as FIFA Street and NBA Street were pretty fun to play and those games too took their respective sports out of conventional locations, football pitches and basketball courts. But what those games had also done was they changed their original game engines and they changed the game mechanics to better suit new locations. WCW Backstage Assault, on the other hand, takes the WCW Mayhem engine and completely downgrades it with nothing at all being added, except a few more animations for dives and weapon shots. Mayhem was also a lot smoother and more pleasing to play, hit detection wasn't great but it was still playable. For whatever reason, the characters in Backstage Assault have what could only be described as jerky animations where the wrestlers move around in really unnatural ways. It looks like frames of animation are also skipped too and it's all very distracting and also pretty annoying to play. Surely having matches in these pretty empty big square rooms without a ring and without ring ropes would free up some resources and allow the developers to improve on the actual gameplay, but no, it seems that the backstage areas and the odd items scattered here and there actually ate up all the resources and it left the wrestlers both looking and playing like absolute dog shit. And I don't want to be overly negative here either, I did want to give this a fair chance and I played it so much hoping things would get better and I'd just adapt to how bad it was, but not once did I find myself having fun while playing Backstage Assault. I had to force myself to complete tasks just to unlock new wrestlers and it's then you realise that the wrestlers themselves more or less all play the exact same with the exception of their finishing move. While loading up each location, you'll get some tips on how to cause extra damage. So for the truck area, we can jump off a truck, we can set a 2x4 on fire, we can use wrenches, trash cans and lead pipes. Setting a 2x4 on fire and jumping off the truck sounds pretty interesting, but good luck trying to do some of these things during actual gameplay. You're going to have to beat your opponent down long enough to set up these little scenarios, but by that time, you might as well just pull off your finisher and end the match. Jumping off the truck isn't nearly as exciting as you'd expect it to be. Collisions look absolutely awful, so it feels like you go through a whole lot of effort for no payoff. The thing is, these hardcore damage moments, as the game likes to call them, is what WCW Backstage Assault is really all about. Using the environment gives you extra damage. It's supposed to be the main difference between Backstage Assault and other wrestling games. This is what sets it apart apparently. But when the hardcore damage moments look so bad and when it's easier to just beat opponents up with wrestling moves, then what's the point? During a match you can also move to different locations, you can actually play through every location in a single match, but again it all looks the same and all you're doing is putting yourself through longer load times, there's no payoff for going through the trouble. So the fighting locations, unfortunately this save file doesn't have every area unlocked but you can still access them by travelling from one location to another. They're all so dull and uninspired that it really doesn't matter anyway. Places available include the loading bay, the bathrooms, the locker room, the media centre as the game likes to call it. The garage is also available, basically it's areas around a wrestling arena. Every area is either a square or a rectangle, each area has different opportunities for hardcore damage and I don't know, some of you may want to look at all these little things you can do in each individual location, but I couldn't have cared less after two or three areas. It's not like playing Mortal Kombat where you're seeing a cool new fatality during matches or checking out the cool animations in a Street Fighter super combo. Instead, the height of excitement in Backstage Assault's unique moves is your character falling off something and maybe landing on their opponent. 
There's practically very little to do in each of these rooms. That list of hardcore damage moments during the load screen, around half of those are based around using basic weapons. It looks like there's loads of opportunities to do unique stuff in each environment, but there just isn't. Irish whipping your opponent into a toilet cubicle isn't exactly groundbreaking gameplay. It makes you notice that you've been taking the standard wrestling ring for granted. The ability to easily climb up one of four corners, setting up rebound moves from the ropes, apron attacks, attacks from the ring to the outside, breaking submission moves at the ropes, things like that. All extremely basic stuff, yet it's all sorely missed in WCW Backstage Assault. Oh, I should have mentioned this earlier, but the button layout is the exact same as WCW Mayhem. The momentum meter works the same way too, with extra damage and momentum being awarded for the use of weapons. Nothing else to say about gameplay really, what you see here is what you get, and what you get is boring after a few matches. Alright game modes, they're seriously lacking here. In exhibition mode you can set up singles matches, first blood matches and human torch matches. Human torch matches are only available for 2 player, and I have no idea why this is. I legitimately think the AI is too fucking dumb to light the 2x4 on fire, honestly. You can also set submissions on and off and knockouts on and off, they should have also given us the option to turn off pinfalls, and that would have added submission only matches, but that really would be asking for too much wouldn't it? Hardcore challenge is your arcade mode, play against random characters and unlock wrestlers, attires, all that stuff. Hardcore Gauntlet is 7 matches with the same life bar, you can also unlock a few things in this mode, but good luck having the patience to play 7 matches. The Hall of Champions is just your list of title holders and records. And so let's jump into Create a Superstar and see what's going on here. So you've got the option of editing existing superstars, wait a minute. Anyway, you can make edits to existing superstars and this is good, maybe we can fix things tight here in that case. Uh, no we can't, the length doesn't go any higher. Maybe if we change the boots? Uh, that'll do, it's not like I'm gonna save this anyway. Yeah, I like when they give the option to change characters already in the game, so this is a bonus. A bonus that I'll never take advantage of because I'm never playing this game ever again. Load times are pretty bad in between selections too. I'd assume this would be even longer when playing the game from disc, so that's a problem. You can set a new name for your wrestler, and you can also set an entrance video, but you can't preview the videos from create a wrestler mode. That's an oversight for sure, and it would have been something at least redeemable. As mentioned before, I suck at making characters from scratch while your mileage may vary here while using Creator Wrestler. Some may enjoy this mode more than others and from what I can see, there are more creation parts in comparison to Mayhem. You'll just need a lot of patience when sorting through the pieces. It's Creator Wrestler on PS1 and folks who created wrestlers on these kind of games know exactly what to expect. The lack of game modes doesn't help at all, there's no kind of story or career mode where you get to play out an angle or anything like that, it's just match after match, straight arcade style. Unlocking characters can be as easy as beating the character in hardcore challenge mode, but you also have to hope that the character that you need actually gets selected as your opponent, it's totally random. And then there's some annoying objectives to complete in order to unlock other superstars. For example, to unlock Eric Bischoff, you gotta win the hardcore belt with Vince Russo. But to unlock Vince Russo, you gotta knock out an opponent in the media center using a briefcase, stuff like that. To unlock Bret Hart, you gotta complete gauntlet mode 5 times, really tedious shit. A few extra attires can also be unlocked by playing hardcore challenge mode with certain wrestlers. Basically you're expected to keep completing the game while hoping to face certain superstars in order to unlock everything. It's a test of patience and not a test of skill. I, nor the guy who uploaded this save file, had the patience to unlock everything. There's really nothing else to see in the N64 version, but I'll show it here anyway just for the sake of it. Now, I'm playing this through emulation and the Nintendo version definitely feels a lot slower. This could be due to the emulator and I tried turning off all enhancements to see if it made any improvement, but it didn't. I'm not sure if the original game on original hardware played this badly because the game wasn't released in Europe, but from what I can see, the N64 release is even worse than the PS1 release. 
Again, this could just be my setup though, so keep that in mind. You don't get as many of those jaggy edges and lines in the N64 version, but you'll miss out on those entrance videos and the opening FMV sequence, and those were probably the best thing about the game unfortunately. So from my experience, my very limited experience that includes emulation, I would avoid the N64 version at all costs. I've had about all I can take here and there's nothing else to really talk about. It's time to answer the question, is WCW Backstage Assault the absolute worst wrestling video game of all time? No, no it isn't, not for me anyway. The WWF games on the NES rank up there as the absolute worst of the worst for me and yes, I know people have nostalgia for the NES and I know because people grew up on those games they'll give them a lot of praise and that's fine. I praise games too that people nowadays may find absolutely awful, but those NES WWF games have no redeeming qualities for me at all as video games and not pieces of nostalgia. I'd rather play Backstage Assault than WWF WrestleMania any day of the week but I'd also curse the person who forced me to choose. I'm not saying Backstage Assault is good by the way, it would be right down at the bottom tier along with those NES games, but if I was forced to choose I'd pick Backstage Assault before any of the old 8-bit Nintendo games. The thing is though, Backstage Assault came out in 2000, it's over a decade older than some of those NES games, so you gotta take the upgrades and technology into consideration too. Some may see it as unfair to compare a PS1 game to an NES game. Backstage Assault does, however, rank up there as one of the worst PlayStation and N64 wrestling games ever released and it could very well be the absolute worst of the generation. Remember, Simpsons Wrestling also exists. I'd rather play Nitro or Thunder though before having to endure Backstage Assault again, and there's simply no way you could recommend this game to anyone, there's nothing to like about it, and you're not going to tell someone to play a game just to see short entrance videos. The game itself has no highlights, nor selling points. I go into these game reviews like I do with most pay per view reviews I cover on the channel, I try to see the positives and I try to raise good points where possible. Backstage Assault has left me completely stumped because there's nothing here, it looks bad, it plays bad, it's got decent commentary I guess, but just like the FMV sequences, you can't recommend a wrestling game based on audio. The critics were right, all those negative reviews were correct. Backstage Assault isn't worth a first look, never mind a second look, and while I personally think you'd have a worse time playing older wrestling games, your time spent with this WCW PS1 game won't be much better. It's a shit way for WCW to go out after having such excellent games in the past, particularly on N64, but all good things must come to an end and Backstage Assault kinda represents where WCW were at the time as a company. Thanks for watching this one guys, and take care.